All right, so the first brewery that we're checking out in Gettysburg today is called Four Score. Now, this brewery definitely wasn't here the last time we were in town. Um, and I know this because our hotel, I can see it across the street. It was right there. We actually had this incident where a drunk guy was like screaming his head off uh, in the parking lot like at two in the morning. And we got, we got all freaked out because the time before that, we heard all these basically ghost noises. I don't know, it's a long story, but uh, got freaked out because of that. But anyways, this place wasn't here. Yeah, they're super new. Yeah, probably in the last like year, I would say the last two years. Yeah, probably opened, 2018 like or 19 maybe yeah. even. I'm not even sure. But either way, pale ales, hazy IPAs, double IPAs, sours, they've got pilsners and I, I, I yeah. a bunch of other stuff too. It looks like, like I got a nice little mix of like some IPAs and some fruited sours, more along the style of a smoothie sour versus a traditional sour, but... They all look pretty dense. Um, this one, I mean, especially, is just super, super dense. And you can see on the top here, it's just a bunch of fruit. I mean, this is great. I think there's coconut in here, hence uh, the separation of like the fat at the top. I got myself a uh, hazy pale ale. As you can see, very freaking hazy. But yeah, it's like a 6% or 5.5% hazy pale ale. Um, super hoppy. Uh, a little bit on the bitter side, but I like that. This is um, a Jamba Tropical Treat Fruited Sour, and it's pretty much a pina colada in a beer. That's insane. It tastes just like a pina colada. This thing, though, looks super insane. I mean, look at the color on that. It looks like carrot juice, and that is amazing. We can see little carbonation bubbles kind of pushing up through the uh, just dense, opaque color here. Yeah. And there's like little pulp molecules that are being held up by the uh, carbonation bubbles. This is very hard for me to explain, but there's definitely pieces of juice floating around in there. Sorry about the noise. We're right next to the main road. This is the only real good place to film here because the inside's taken up like crazy. So this is definitely along the lines of a Drecker smoothie sour. It's uh, thick, very thick. It's almost all nectar juice. I'm getting pineapple, orange, tangerine, all the tropical notes. It's delicious, but I question whether it's actually beer. There comes a point where you hit this limit of like what's a beer and what can be just considered alcohol juice. Oh wow, yeah, that's that's good though. It's good. It's thick. God damn, that's really good. I mean, it's delicious. Don't get me wrong. A beer. I mean, I guess technically you can call anything a beer. Yeah. Everything passes these days, right? So I guess it's fine, but like that's more of a juice, like a, yeah. a tart juice cocktail kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, really. Like an alcohol smoothie. These two, however, look a little bit more like beers that you would traditionally see. What can you tell me about these two? Well, our food just came, but we're just going to crank through this review right here. This one is called the Hop Hat, and this is your Typical uh, sort of hazy IPA. This is the dank side. Yeah, the color difference, I mean, is is evident. This this one's definitely a little bit lighter than this one over here. That's kind of West Coasty, almost. It's this, not quite as bitter as this one. Isn't quite as bitter as I thought it was going to be. This one's very bitter. Really? Let's swap. And there's this this like um, more of like a floral note to oh, it. Oh yeah, I smell it right up yeah. right as I put it up to my face. Yeah, this one's really florally and kind of. A little bit more earthy. That one's very fruity and sort of yeah. piney. Yeah. But they're both kind of like, yeah, this one's definitely more West Coasty than that one. Yeah, for sure. That yeah. one's like really better. The dank side, right? Definitely danky. Check out this mac and cheese bowl right here. The food that's coming out of this kitchen right now just looks amazing. Here's some fries with beer cheese. These fries look super crispy and super dope. So we're gonna get to eating this thing and see what's up there. So I just noticed that the mac and cheese that I got uses the same exact pasta as Sandra's potato uh, macaroni salad. It would have been nice to see kind of a differentiation between those two, but no big deal. So this is called the dankness. The dankness. It's a eight and a half percent. So this is the dank side. And that's the dankness. Yeah, this is a double IPA. Uh -huh. Eight and a half percent. Typical kind of like New England style flavor profile there. Yeah, let's see what this is all about. 
There's body. Oh yeah. There's there's some sweetness from. There's a nice melon thing going mm -hmm. on in there. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I'm more impressed with that one honestly than the single IPAs. To yeah. be frank, like if I was if I was to come here, I would say the key players are probably the double IPAs and the sours mm -hmm. are the standouts for sure. Wasn't much flavor to my mac and cheese. Wasn't much flavor to the potato salad or the um, the, the pasta salad. Pasta yeah. salad, right? Um, fries are really good, and, and the, the brisket's brisket. really good. It's really good. So yeah, some standouts, some some average stuff too. But uh, yeah, overall, I'd say it's pretty good. Yeah, for sure. If we were to recommend breweries in Gettysburg, would this fall under the category of recommended? For sure. I would. I would say yeah. I would say for the sours alone, it got to come. Double IPAs are pretty good. Yeah. There's kind of something for everybody. We didn't try any of the lighter stuff, like the Pilsners That's or anything true. like or that. That's true, the They had like some farmhouse, I think Saison's or farmhouse ales. We didn't try that either, so. And I don't know if it's seasonal. Maybe like in the fall, the stouts will be really good and they'll focus more on that. But I, I can't say, but that would be amazing. And we're gonna have to come back here in the fall and check it out again. Yeah, and check sure. out some of their like more heavier beers, yeah. like porters and Overall, stouts. Thumbs up from us. Okay, well here we are, day two. We've eaten some breakfast and checked out of the hotel. Um, we went over to Hanover because there's the Utz factory. You know, the guys that make the chips. But yeah, there's some uh, some definite snack attack action happening here. There's They have deep discounts on like every snack thing available. So it's great to stock up on pretzels and cheese puffs and whatever the hell else you need for your barbecues this summer. We ended up going to Battlefield Brewing Company and we got a flight and we sat down we were like, where are we going to film? And Sandra took one sip of the beer and was kind of like, <laughs> you know what? Nah. Everything had this green apple acetaldehyde thing happening. I mean, nothing tasted like beer. No. Nothing did. Everything tasted like apple juice. Um, and, and it's not like we're saying that to be mean. It just... It is what it is. We're a beer review channel, right? Like we have to say what it is. Um, so we didn't actually even end up filming there. And then while we were inside, we got stuck there with one flight that we couldn't drink because it was awful. And we got stuck because the thunderstorm rolled in and it was so crazy and intense that we couldn't even run outside to the car because we parked too far away. And then we actually, we were trying to go find some food afterwards and it was still thunderstorming. Every, every place, because it's Saturday night around Gettysburg, was an hour wait at least. Mm -hmm. Everything was packed. It was like 5.30, 6 o'clock on the dot. So after a lot of like cursing and meandering around, we found this pizza place called... Upper Crust. And let me tell you, man, that pizza and beer was just so good after such a disappointing run at Battlefield. That stuff made me feel literally physically sick. Yeah, no, I mean, my stomach started hurting within a few sips of drinking that. It was... But yeah, we were going to go to Appalachian Brewing Company, but again, they were just packed. Their wait time yeah. was like an hour and a half, so we couldn't even do that. I haven't had bad beer like that since since that non-alcoholic one we just did, actually. Yeah. The brew dog one. But for all the different reasons, though, I mean... Yeah, that was, was just quality. a bad beer. Yeah. But these were bad because the the fermentation... They, I think they didn't let it rest on that yeast cake enough, and that it just developed that strong acetaldehyde flavor. And then they probably didn't condition it long enough either. They're probably just rushing it out. Or they have unsanitary brewing conditions. Either one, I don't know. Either one's bad. But uh, today we're going to Fat Bat, and hopefully those guys will be a little bit better. So hopefully we'll have some more content. But we're going to go inside this Ut store and grab some chips and cookies and all kinds of fun snack food items. <laughs> south of town um, and raised our kids there um, and again when I was looking for something to do it was kind of time you know my kids didn't really need me you know day-to-day -day anymore um, so 
so we looked at town, and at the time, this is pre-COVID, the town of Hanover was really getting ready to take off. There was some things happening where there was revitalization efforts going on. And I thought, you know, it'd be nice to be in a downtown area where people can, you know, walk, walk to you and walk around. And also, I wanted to support that revitalization and start drawing people from out of town. Um, at the time, I worked in the Baltimore area, and people were coming up to go to Brewfest and stuff like that in Philly, Pittsburgh, those kind of places. But I thought, you know what? We have a few brewers here in town. If we made this a brewery destination, it would really draw in more people. So a lot of people ask about the name Fat Bat, where did it come from? My brother was a home brewer before he started all this, and he has two bugs that pug, pug dogs that would brew with him. And one would lay on her back and look at him upside down, so her ears would stick up, and he would say, you look like a little fat fruit bat. So when I asked him to be my brewer, he said, sure, can we call it Fat Bat? And I said, yes, we can. <laughs> so that was his only request, that we call it Fat Bat Brewing. So that's what we did. <laughs> I told him from the beginning, you know, I'll fire you. If, if you're goofing off and not, you know, just not performing, I'll fire you. And he said, I know you would. <laughs> five barrel system and um, but one of our fermenters is a 10 barrel fermenter and we do that for the pigeon pills because it's a, it's a lager and it takes longer to sit but right now I have 12 tabs uh, I wanted more options than that so from the get-go I told my brother I need a seltzer because not everybody drinks beer which I don't understand but some people don't like beer <laughs> but uh, so he made a seltzer for me. He made a lot. I said, make me a lime or a lemon seltzer because that mixes well with everything. So we make mixed drinks with that. Because I have the opportunity in Pennsylvania to carry Pennsylvania wines and liquors, but I only want to sell what we make. We're doing those kind of different things. I make, with my coffee stout, I make iced coffee drinks like you would order in the morning. Like, you know, I want caramel macchiati or whatever. The, we have, yeah, so we make, and we, pour, we, we serve them in a really huge coffee mug, which is really cool. We do have a little bit of an expansion plan in this building, like downstairs, I mentioned we're going to, oh, I was talking about earlier about it, we're going to have um, a, what I call my dark beer room. Um, it's going to be more like a speakeasy, and it's going to be where we keep our beers that have been aged in barrels. And we already have a bar, he did a similar, but it's much smaller, it's a stand-up bar downstairs, and we'll have more of the couches around in the basement. It's a similar size room, a little smaller because our, um, this far back is our cold room. So um, it'll be a smaller, more intimate area, but that's where the dark beers will be served. Um, that's my stage two. Upstairs is stage three. That'll be an event space. So um, people, many people have already asked to rent this out, and I'm like, well, we're open Thursday through Sunday. I'm not closing it to the public, because that bothers me when I go somewhere, and I'm like, what do you mean they're closed? I feel like an outsider. Um, so we won't do that. Right now, we could do an event Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, but most people want a weekend. So my plan, my stage three is upstairs to open a space similar to this, but the bar would be against the back wall. So that then we can have more tables and it can be more, um, it can be overflow bar, but also um, people can rent that out. All right, guys, welcome back. We are at Fat Bat Brewing Company here in Hanover, Pennsylvania. This is one of about five or six breweries uh, that exist in the area at the moment. We uh, are here and we got this nice looking flight of, of beers here of all different various styles. We've got the, uh, the fat bat. Um, it's literally a bat that they serve it in, which is really cool. So let's get to it. This one is the uh, Pilsner. We've already been kind of drinking this one. It's the uh, Czech Pilsner, actually. Yeah, it's called um, the Pigeon Pills. Pigeon Pills. That's really good. Now these guys have only been open for about two months. Right. So they're really, they're probably the new kids on the block here. Um, this Pilsner is, is quite good. Um, it's, I feel like it's like 85, 95% of the way there. Um, I feel like it's a little bit on the sweeter side and it needs a little bit more body to it. Um, but like overall, it's so close to being perfect that I can give that a total pass. Anyway, moving on, let's do the, uh, what, number one? Yeah, so that's called the Wingman. That's a pale ale. Okay. Got a good, nice, weedy, malty backbone to it. A decent amount of hot character there, but uh, 
Yeah, that's a that's a more traditional pale ale. I was gonna say, ale. yeah. Yeah. Nowadays we're so used to like this kind of overly bitter and hop forward pale ales that you that it's hard to kind of differentiate the line between a pale ale and an actual IPA. Yeah, I this think this one does a good job of definitely making that distinguished. As I keep drinking it, it tastes better and better, and that bitterness is starting to kind of come out. Mm -hmm. All right, so we also got a New England style pale ale. Um, yeah, I mean, this is uh, decently hazy, I would say. It's not, you know, super, super hazy, but then again, this is not the veil, so yeah. whatever. Oh, all right. Okay, I yeah. can already smell the sweetness from the tropical. It definitely has a bit of residual sweetness happening in there, um, but it's not over the top. I think that bitterness that accompanies that right at the back end, it really kind of solidifies that, that beer. It's a little carbonated, a little more, a little... A little over-carbonated? Over-carbonated. Perhaps, perhaps. Slightly, but it's not bad. I kind of wish some of those uh, fruit notes would come out a bit more, and I think, you know, maybe a bit more body would make it an excellent Nipa. I think the hoppiness is just right. The bitterness that comes out is I think, perfect. Yeah, I think with all these, the aroma is the thing that I'm missing here but the taste is totally there. I think this should be called a hazy IPA versus a Nipa. Yeah, I agree. Because New England style IPA, as everyone knows, is super just densely opaque. It's very yeah. opaque. This one's more on just like very the hazy thick, side. Versus thick and it. creamy. Whereas this one is more, you know. Just hazy. Just, just hazy, yeah. yeah. So this one's a knockout coffee stout. Uh, I like that play on words there. Knockout coffee stout. It rhymes kind of, it's nice. Mm -hmm. You want coffee to knock, to you, knock back you out on your feet? I don't know. <laughs> Definite coffee notes right up front on this one. Uh, some maltiness, a little bit of sweetness, and kind of this like sort of laid-back milky character to it. I feel like this is going to be pretty smooth. There's a nice um, sweetness I'm getting. Yeah. If you like coffee, you'll like this beer. Yeah, I like this. And I like this. It's not sweet um, at all, no. really. The one thing that I would say, a little bit more body. Yes. That would help a little bit. Um, but as it stands, yeah, I mean, better better uh, coffee stout than I've ever brewed, so there's that. <laughs> Sometimes these coffee stouts, like, you know, they're so, like, overpowering that you get nothing but, like, just bitterness from that coffee bean, and, like, stuck to the back of your throat. But this one, this one's a nice kind of balance where you it get it up balanced. front, but then it kind of yeah. rinses away towards the end. It reminds me of the way that the Wallops Island at Rocket Frog drinks, where it's a darker beer. It's a um, but that's a brown. It's ale. a brown ale, yeah. a different style. But at the same time, it's, it it's still a lot of maltiness in that beer, a lot of sweetness um, happening there. But it drinks like a lager would, you know. So that's a good one. I like that. I like that one too. So overall, everything here has been really fantastic. I mean, I've got to say that we chose a good brewery for the third one. I think. Um, yeah. Good way to end the uh, little mini vacation, the two-day mini vacation uh, in the world of beer here in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. So, if you're interested, come on down and swing by Fat Bat and uh, see what they have to offer. Until next time, guys. Cheers. Cheers.